I got married at 30, which is old. So old, my God, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I was an old maid <laughs> by that time, Mumbai. Um, and then of course, when I went through my miscarriages, because yeah. I had four miscarriages, the talk was, oh, it's because she waited so long. Her eggs are old. I mean, come on. And from then on, yeah. whenever something good or would bad. happen or bad, it was self-reflection. Sit down, journal, understand what is it? What, what is my lesson here? What do I need to learn? And it's not easy because now you're sitting with your demons, right? And they don't want to leave. No. And they're looking at you like, mm -hmm. where do you think you're taking us? Yeah, what are you going to do? Yes. You talk so highly about your mom, mm. you know, and I know sh something happened, but that's your story to tell. Sure. Yeah. But when you think of her, what do you think about? Um, a very graceful woman who epitomizes strength. And she was, she is the reason I use my voice. She is the reason mm. because I feel she started breaking generational curses, generations, generational cycles well before, you know, in her teens. Yes. So she was that woman. She was that like every, scandalous in the sense that what is she wearing what is she doing how is she a second wife how is she doing this how has she done that and she always owned her story so we go back to that we were never taught to be a friend or make friends or we we're never taught yeah. about money we we're never taught to say no and uh, what i learned especially after my mom's stroke is no is a complete sentence you don't need to explain further and why i learned to be able to say no is for my mental health, my mental wellness, nothing else, yes. because I became very selfish. A ah, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. Guys, dream come true because I grew up listening to this person. Honestly, me, when I discovered Capital FM, I was always there. I used to be on Rick D and I used to just listen to her and I never thought one day I would be sitting with her on my show ready to just let her walk us through her journey. And today's episode is dedicated to, like when I sit here, I can't even hold my emotions because when you grow up listening to these people and you are stuck in a Kawan house place where things are just happening and you don't even know what your life will be it gets a bit emotional so even for me she doesn't even know it today's conversation is special for me and it's a bit emotional but I believe if you are sitting somewhere and you are watching this episode and you are not you don't believe in yourself I urge you to watch this and believe in the vision in your vision in your dreams in the possibility of something beautiful happening in your life because no matter where you are if you put in the work you will meet people and you will sit with people and you will be encouraged totally by today's episode that's for me i'm about to let her introduce herself i was like pinky you are so beautiful and she's like lynn this is just the power of makeup and i'm like no this is not makeup you are an amazing soul energy does not lie the number of times i've met uh, our paths have crossed she's always given me that energy like lynn you belong lynn you are doing an amazing job she does not know mm, <laughs> she does not know uh -oh. what those words mean to me but when you are sitting with people who have been legends in the industry and they acknowledge and they tell you Lynn you are doing an amazing job for me that means a lot so I appreciate having her here I don't even know what our conversation will be about but I know we will flow so I'm about to let her introduce herself but before I do that you know we gotta pay a couple of bills here I want to say thank you so much to our incredible partners of today's conversation King 
Talents Developers Limited. We had a very productive meeting with them yesterday. I always follow up. I don't want to be advertising for people and just taking their money and there are no results. So when we went for that meeting and they told me how you guys, you are purchasing those apartments, I felt really happy. And I know we even have a special viewer from the US who just wanted to pass by and say hi to the team because we pointed him towards the right direction. So I can't wait to meet you, sir. And I appreciate you just supporting our work, investing with Kings Developers Limited and just giving them a chance. Now you know them. So if you are looking for a home, an apartment, and you don't want to be scammed, very ISO certified, why don't you visit them at Prism Towers? And of course, to say thank you so much to my incredible team that puts this work together and make sure that you guys continue experiencing impactful conversations one story at a time. And now, without further ado, please allow me to let this legend, this beautiful woman, this person that majority of us, in women in the industry, look up to introduce herself. Good morning. Okay, so I, you're <laughs> going to make me cry already. No, we are not. And if we cry, it's tears of joy. Ah, oh, the yes. makeup will disappear. No. <laughs> Lynn, that yes. was amazing. Really? And it just goes to show that you definitely are in your purpose. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, you really are. My name is Pinky Gelani. Yeah. And um, as Lynn rightfully said, I've been in the industry for a very long time as a radio presenter, a TV presenter. I was in print media. Um, and for sure, people have said to me, I've grown up listening to you. And as much as I'm like, oh my God, am I that old? But it oh, makes me... <laughs> It makes me happy that you remember yes. and that you um, aspired and you're actually living the dream that you you once imagined. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yes. And now today I call myself a conversation curator. I bring people together to have conversations like yourself, yeah. uncomfortable conversations, which is why I really resonate with you, Lynn. Yes. I think you're so powerful in what you do. Thank you. And you're making changes. And that's what we need to see is people making impact. Mm. I appreciate that. Yeah. When I tell and thank you to King's developers. No, we are yeah. plugging it for me. Of like, course. <laughs> we need people like this to support <laughs> conversations like yes, this, you I know, because if, if it wasn't for them, uh, you know, your reach wouldn't be so wide. And thank you to yeah. your community for supporting you, yeah. for going out and buying the properties. I'm also going to have a look. Oh, for real? Yes, oh my for God. real. I'm about to come to my bonus, <laughs> Pinky. I'll be like, Pinky, we got to do this so for I, each other. I appreciate Thank yeah. you for plugging that of in for course. me. I appreciate it. Yeah. But we, I, I remember growing up in Huruma. So mm -hmm. my mom had just saved enough to get us this radio. Sure. And, you know, Kitambo, we didn't even used to listen to Capital FM. So in the, yeah. in the middle, of changing channels mm -hmm. here and there. I bumped into you, right? And I was like, uh, for me, I, you, you had such powerful impact, but you also left the stage when the applause was up there. Yeah. And I'm looking at myself right now and I'm like, will I ever get the courage or the confidence to walk out when <laughs> the applause is just there? Yeah. For me, it's you saying, I have other things that I got to do and I have to attend to. But do you ever regret coming in, having peop, so many people looking up to you and love people love you? And now I've interacted with you three times now yeah. off camera. Yes. And you always give me this beautiful energy. Do you regret coming out of radio when people really needed more from you? I don't regret it because I really felt like I was following what my intuition was guiding me to do. And I know you understand yes. what I mean when I say this. It was not um, resonating. The space was no longer resonating. It had become toxic for me. So I was not happy. Therefore, I was not showing up authentically. I was. I felt like I was now showing up just for the paycheck as opposed to the audience who, who, like you said, indeed loved and gave their energy to me. So I had to be able to give them the right energy, which I was not doing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I don't regret it. That okay. is the reason that I walked away. And that's the reason I was able to, you know, which in whichever way, come back okay. um, in my own space, in my own um, sort of show up as, as me and not have to compete with anyone yes. um, in that regard. Yeah. Okay. That, that's such a, I don't know, making that decision. I remember being in a workspace where I was underpaid. I was caught. I was so exhausted, but I kept 
being scared and i said this is one conversation i'll make yeah. to my people i kept being scared of rent yeah and food yeah for me it was always it's real. i could resign right yeah. now but where is the money for rent i have come? bills to pay I right have bills yeah. to pay i don't have to, i need to pay for my matatu yeah that's such a that's such a dark place to be in. it's it's a it's an awful space to be in it's really um it's not fun i was actually having a conversation with a lady yesterday yeah. who is being sexually harassed at work but she needs the money and i told her i said shout because if we don't use our voice now many generations later the 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 those women will wonder where the voice got lost mm. so so use it you know shout speak and you you know as much as you you don't believe it but when you walk out there will be guidance it may not be easy not like nobody is going to come and give it to you on a silver platter yes. but there will be guidance because you will never be forsaken it will never be like okay i walked out of this but yet i'm not able to eat or meet things that i need to meet mm. like like you're saying matatu fair etc yes. there's always been some grace and as much as i i feel like i i come from a privileged family there was struggle mm-hmm. there was indeed struggle where i was the one it was the load was on me where i was paying a lot of bills um but i had to walk out of something that made me comfortable because i feel in discomfort we change Oh, we do yeah. and we, we shift yes yeah. shift we you know that's we'll the get word. deeper into that yeah. but you are also an incredible mother I've, I've i've seen a couple of clips you mm-hmm. and the kids mm-hmm. and i was having this conversation with a mutual friend yesterday yeah. and we were talking about conscious parenting yeah you are parenting gen z's right now oh gen alpha gen oh. oh sorry i think my daughter is gen z yes i think so she's gen the son is al- alpha alpha yeah if there is an apology you would make to your kids mm-hmm. right now what would it be wow i feel um it would be that if i i would apologize to them if i let them down in any capacity mm. by not being present um and being caught up in what i feel is important at the moment um but i do apologize to them. Mm-hmm. I always tell them when when you know there's something where I have to discipline them and I have to be the strict mom, I make sure I have a conversation about it later. Yes. And I say I don't like who that made me. So please let's try and understand each other. Let's try and you do better and I do better. Yeah. It's not only on them yes. for them to do better. Mm-hmm. Um but indeed I feel apologizing to your kids is something we must make normal. Yeah. because we are human. Par- parenting is also new to us. So if we get it wrong, we must also say, guys, I'm sorry. I don't think I did this thing right. Mm. And I ask for your help and your guidance. As much as you're little and you're young, how can I be a better mom? Have you had those conversations with Absolutely, them? Absolutely, yes. What's their response? How do they react to this is their mom? saying okay guys i got this wrong mm. how best do you think we can do it i see them being more self aware you know so as much as they hear me and they um absorb what i'm saying mm. i also see them ready to apologize when they have made a made a mistake yes. and to own up to something and to uh understand that people make mistakes and to err is human mm. but also to be aware that maybe we can do better yeah yeah i love cuz uh, the reason why i brought it up i've covered a lot of conversations here we are all dealing with our own darkness brokenness you're like i'm the mom in this house mm. so you going to do what i tell you <laughs> to do right and it's not helping yeah. and i've been having crazy conversations with gen z i love gen z yeah. i've stated that in yeah. this show i feel like they are a reflection of what we could have become mm-hmm. but because we did didn't become that sure. we have to project somewhere yeah. so you either project here or you project to your parents right mm-hmm. when you find yourself in that situation what was the awake 
taken in moment for you where you realized I'm from a different generation, they're from a different yeah. generation and we have to meet each other somewhere. I mean, for me, I've never been in denial where I am in regards to my age. So therefore, and I do have the conversations around the generation gap. When I had my kids, I had to understand that they are from a different generation. Yes. But this is why, for example, I'm on TikTok. I don't take it seriously, but I'm on TikTok so that I know how to guide them when they finally decide to be on mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. on their own. Right now, maybe they're on social media through my platform, yes. right? Yes. But when they decide to do it by themselves, as an older generation, I can tell them, this is what you might face this is how you may protect yourself. This is what you need to do in order to make sure your digital footprint is clean. Um, so that's the only reason I feel that, especially TikTok, that's why I'm there because I just need to be more aware. However, I feel TikTok is for all generations. Um, I, I think not being in denial as to where you are as a parent, what age you are, you're not their age. They will do things that you like sometimes I'm like what what is that <laughs> but it's also understanding they're from a different generation and you said it very nicely I love Gen Z yes. it's not holding anything against them it's trying to say that we can learn from the younger generation mm -hmm. because they have a lot to offer when when I hand my son my phone he's able to do things with graphics and that I've not shown him mm -hmm. how does he know all these things because it is in their blood. They are this generation yeah. who will be very much digitalized. Yes. So we have a lot that we can learn from them. However, I feel when it comes to values and um, ethics, we still need to instill it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the ones who are bringing them up. So don't just say, ah, they know everything and that's it. Yes. We are guiding, guiding them. If I have any message to parents, it's that um, it's a, something I read when I was young, I think 13 or 14, yeah. Khalil Gibran, who's a poet. Yes. He says, our children are not ours, although they come from us, right? So that's another thing we have to understand is they, they're not our property. So what are we molding them into? For me, it's always, that's in the back of my mind. I want to be able to have contributed to society in some way. And if that is by giving society decent human beings who continue, mm. who be good, a mm. uh, good husband for my son, um, you know, a good sort of citizen for my daughter, yes. for example, then I've done my part mm. as a parent. You've done your part. Yeah. I want to take you all the way back. You know, I was just going through your story. When mm -hmm. you sit here, someone would think you've had it all figured out yeah, from the yeah. one go, oh, you know, she's a princess, <laughs> you know, she, she came from, you know, these rich soft family, life. soft life, you see, you know, soft life, you know, she's, you know, she came from, but yeah. you've, you've encountered a lot of things. For me, I'm really interested to understand how you've navigated loss, how you've dealt with grief, how you how you became um, how now we get to experience the pinky we're experiencing right now mm -hmm. have you had to deal with your own traumas have you had to deal with your own brokenness mm -hmm. how did you heal yourself and what exactly can we be able to pick from your story so from a point the series is called rebuilding yeah. I know you you're building you keep <laughs> building and building and yes. building and yeah. building you know but from a place you are comfortable in could you walk us through your life maybe a bit of childhood sure. journey because sure. I know you've also had a step family. Mm -hmm. How was that, you know, just navigating yeah. through that hostility? And where are you right now from a place you're comfortable okay, with? Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, my mom is a second wife. Yeah. <clears throat> At the time, my father was extremely wealthy. You know, in the 70s, he was probably one of the few Asian men who was very, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. My dad died uh, in 1982. I was six years old. And that was my first experience with loss and trauma. I didn't understand it. You can imagine at six, I was like, what, where, where is he gone? Is he coming back? When will he be back? That sort of a thing. Um, and then just having to get on with life because at that time, you don't know about therapy. You don't know about, like for me, really, what, what is death? 
where does a person go when they die and we cremate right so there is nothing there's nothing there's no gravestone that i can go and yeah. see or feel and and say this is this is my dad my dad is here it's gone gone completely Completely. um so having my mom to step into the role of mother and father having my brothers to step into the role of my father figures and trying to understand that as i was growing older um i don't think i understood grief but i just remember as a child crying a lot missing something whatever that was watching my mom struggle with you know, the step family yes. or family or having to deal with court cases. I could always always hear conversations. I was never part of those conversations, mm-hmm. but there was court cases and there was the will and there was um, <clears throat> taking the will, like saying, this is not the real will. There's, you know, just a, it was Chaotic. Bollywood. <laughs> Bollywood. Bollywood. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then growing older, having to deal with being bullied in school. Because my mom always, she, you know, she made me like, she, because of everything she went through, she sort of said, make the boys in your class your friends as opposed to the girls. Maybe her experience mm-hmm. with women in society. She said they will, you know, they're better friends. So I used to hang out with boys because also I grew up with brothers. So it was comfortable to hang out with boys. And that suddenly made me an outcast. Mm-hmm. And the girls couldn't understand that. And <clears throat> that's where I started being made fun of. And I developed a big chip on my shoulder. So I would start fights. Really? Can you imagine? Like do do. Yes. <laughs> like this. <laughs> In school. You? Yes. Okay. Someone would look at me the wrong way. I'd be like, well, what are you looking at exactly? Look at me again. Yeah, look at me again. <laughs> and this hand was always ready. Because I was trained by my brothers. Yes. This is how you give a hot slap. And I always knew that they were behind me, right? So if I start a fight, they're there. Yes. And I walk away. (laughs) But then I realized that that's not the way um, to handle things as well. So when I when I I left school, uh, my school, and I sat my my exams privately because of the bullying. It was so extreme. Apparently, I don't remember these conversations, Mm. but I used to beg my mom to tell her I don't want to go to school. And I'm glad she heard me. I'm glad in a way she heard me because it could have been worse. Like, goodness knows what could have happened. Mm -hmm. Even what I could have done to myself. But I don't recall any suicidal thoughts. I don't recall that. So she had me, you know, sit my O-levels privately. And then I went to a different school. But I was much younger. And I was doing my A-levels at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And again... There's just a lot of relationship issues in regards to friendships and how to make friends and how to be a friend because, you know, it was, it's again something I was never taught. And are we really taught that as human beings? This is what a good friend looks like. And this is, you know, you just assume. It's the same thing about money. We're never taught. Like, this is how you invest and this is how you make money and this is how you lose money and whatever. Um, And then... When I went away to university, it was a week later, my brother died in a car accident. Mm. So it was revisiting a lot of open hurt wounds because of the trauma with my father. Um, not again comprehending that life and death is are, are, you know, the minute you are born, one thing that is certain is that you will die. How and when, that's not... Uh, for and yeah and acceptance so i think when i was 17 and this happened and i realized that this is reality like it's fleeting life is fleeting i feel i then took it upon myself to heal myself because again there was no therapy there was who am i talking to where are my friends friends are in and out my mom was in a different condition completely. I was a teenager. We weren't as close as we then became. Um, so I started buying books on how, you know, what is grief? What is death? How to heal yourself? Um, and I just started understanding that what happens when we go through trauma. At this point, I thought I'm the only person in this entire world yeah. who has had this happen to them. 
But it's only when you start um, talking about it within circles who understand that you realize that it's not just you and mm. far much worse uh, has happened to other people around mm. you. Mm. So then you build empathy and then you build compassion and then you understand. And then what I realized in, from the books I started reading <clears throat> is that you are in control of your life. So you bring upon experiences in order for you to evolve and learn. And when I started taking responsibility for my experiences, good or bad, it's when I truly started to heal. Yeah, key word, responsibility. There you go. I think we, we, we as humans have experienced that before. It was everyone's fault apart from mine. Yeah. It's I'm a victim. Not, oh, yeah, me. I'm a victim. Oh, yeah. God, they did me wrong, mm -hmm. you know. And I trade carefully. Yeah, I am. It's 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 also not an easy place to be where yeah. you have to tell yourself the truth. Yeah, and ask yourself what role have I also played in all this? Yeah, yeah. So you took responsibility. Yeah, and from then on, yeah. whenever something good or would bad. happen or bad. It was self-reflection. Sit down, journal, understand what is it? What, what is my lesson here? What do I need to learn? And it's not easy because now you're sitting with your demons, right? And they don't want to leave. No. And they're looking at you like, mm -hmm. where do you think you're taking us? Yeah, what are you going to do? Yes. What are you going to do with me? And it's going down those dark, very dark spaces and just learning who you want to be, how you want to show up in life. And <clears throat> therefore, not necessarily slaying the demons or the dragons, yes. <clears throat> but befriending them and then asking them nicely, can you now go? Can I'm you done. Leave? Yeah, that's a door. <clears throat> and we're done. I'm done with this. That's powerful. Because I, <laughs> I had somewhere. Sometimes in life, invite your demons, mm -hmm. invite your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I, I would want to quote her, but I can't remember who she is, but I'm going to put the name on yeah. the screen for you guys. The name just escaped my mind. She's like, sometimes sit with your weaknesses, your demons, and just even offer them a cup of coffee yeah. and ask them, you're here. And why are you here? Why are you what here? What is it? What is it? Yeah. And then ask them to leave. Yeah. Ask them, but you gotta have to go through that yeah. stage where you sit down with your demons. But we don't want to do that because, because as long hard. as, <laughs> as long as we in that victim mentality, yeah. everything for us is everyone else's fault, not yeah. me. I didn't. It. I did not do this. It was done unto mm -hmm. me. But I'm so happy you got that at such a young age. Yeah. I think I just got there like five or six years ago. Okay. Yeah, I was always a victim. Okay. I was always like, oh, my dad did this. Yeah. Now, when I used to speak about my dad in the past, I would speak about him with a lot of bitterness because it's my dad. He did this. I should have gone to posh schools, <laughs> po unis, go to the UK for uni, everywhere. Yeah. Apart, It's just that my dad did not. Yeah. So it was, I got that six or seven years ago. That's when I started understanding myself and I'm like, okay, so it's been done to mm. me, but what am I doing exactly. about it myself, you yeah. know? But if you're just 17 when you got there. I just don't know if what would well, have happened for me if I, I mean, got there earlier. 17 is when the journey started. started. I oh. would say it was much like, and it's not, an, it's not overnight, right? No, it's not. Even right now. Even right now. <laughs> Even right oh, now. Yeah. So you go, you go through it and it now helped you to deal with grief and the things that you would see your mom going. You talk so highly about your mom, mm. you know, and... I know sh something happened, but that's your story to tell. Sure, yeah. But when you think of her, what do you think about? Um, a very graceful woman who epitomizes strength. And she was, she is the reason I use my voice. She is the reason. Mm. Because I feel she started breaking generational curses, generations, generational cycles well before you know, in her teens. Yes. So she was that woman. She was that, like, every, scandalous in the sense that, what is she wearing? What is she doing? How is she a second wife? How is she doing this? How has she done that? And 
always owned her story and never hid anything. So even when I asked her hard questions, she was ready to give me the answers. She was ready to say, I've made a mistake here and I could have done this better and I wish I did that and I wish I didn't do this. So also showing me, uh, unfortunately, no, let me, let me take that back. Yes. She, she never showed me she was human because everything she went through, she made it look like easy. Walking the path. Yeah, there was a point where she was shot by thugs and the bullet was lodged in her thigh and we were in hospital and they were like, okay, now we need to remove this. And she was like, wait. And she took her finger out and she pulled it out and she threw it in the <laughs> No <laughs> way. Oh my God. And everyone was like, what just happened? Yeah. She's like, okay, I'm ready to go home. I don't want any surgery or whatever. No, no. To that point where I was like, hey, this woman is definitely a superhero. And she's made of steel. Yeah. Until I saw her go through what she went through. Mm. And that made me realize that whatever the case we need to deal with our trauma as women we need to learn to say no to whoever even your children i i say that she never said no to me mom i need this mom i need that mom whatever time okay 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 and i took advantage of that i wish she had learned to say excuse me it's 11 o'clock at night i'm sleeping sort it out yourself you're a grown woman call me tomorrow <laughs> call me tomorrow <clears throat> I wish she had grieved her husband and grieved her son as opposed to fighting the world because then maybe the world, then maybe the universe wouldn't have broken her to an extent where now she has to sit silently with her thoughts and maybe find her healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta learn to say no. Yeah. I've had such a big problem saying no. Yeah until like 2021 mm -hmm. until 2021 and wow. i felt so much guilt yeah because lean i need this i give it lean i need and i give it to you it's 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 really hard mm. how do you how like how do you move you yeah. know how do you actually say no because it's easy until you learn <coughs> to say no and then you feel a lot of guilt and then you call someone oh pole mm. but now yeah, i have it, it. Yeah, let it me is. send it to you <laughs> you keep double checking yourself yeah. you keep even asking yourself am i a bad person for saying no so we go back to that we were never taught to be a friend or make friends or we we're never taught yeah. about money we we're never taught to say no and uh, what I learned, especially after my mom's stroke, is no is a complete sentence. You don't need to explain further. And why I learned to be able to say no is for my mental health, my mental wellness, nothing else. Yes. Because I became very selfish after I saw my mom have a stroke that took away her voice and took away her movement. And I said, that will not happen happen to me so how do i make sure this will not happen to me mm. say, no. say no say no is it working oh yeah i mean i'm a terrible person <laughs> to some people but it doesn't matter you have opinions about me anyway yes you know whether so i'm a good person yeah, or not you whether i do for you opinion. or not yeah so no no i know i won't be coming no i can't do that no you can't borrow this from me no no. Hey, just no. <laughs> no. And I don't need to explain myself. And why I don't no. need to explain myself. Yes, initially it's the guilt because mm. that's what we, you know, you're brought up to be a people pleaser. You're brought up to say, make sure you, 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 you're in favor um, with everybody. But really, people pleasers are very miserable people. True. Ask me about it. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. You miserable. Yeah. You think, oh gosh, I don't mm. even want to get there. Yeah. It's, you, it's just miserable. Like you, you are miserable. Yeah. Truthfully. If even anyone is watching and they are going through their people pleasing face, get out of yeah. it as soon as you can. Please. They don't love you. Mm. They love what you're doing for them. Exactly. And that's and they say you cannot set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. Stop it get out yeah stop it put put on a sweater yourself and tell everyone else look <laughs> i mean like i got myself a sweater even you guys find yourself one wow hmm. Oi. because when worse comes to worse when it comes you know to it they'll find a sweater yes
and they won't think about yeah. you. And my mom used to say one thing about life is it goes on. So whether you are here or not, yeah, people will find a way to maneuver. Yes. So right now, if they're calling Lynn and Lynn is like, yes, 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 yes. The day Lynn is not here because she's not here because she's been pleasing everyone to a point that she could not take it anymore. And she collapsed, you know, out of just pleasing everyone. When she's not, they will find a way to, to get on. Lynn. Yeah. They'll find a way. Find that was such a hard realization for me, honestly. Mm. Even sometimes I would look at my emails and people calling me and people wanting to share their stories. And I felt like I needed to say yes, yes, yes to everyone. Mm -hmm. And when I got to a place where I get to read something in my, in, in, like my instincts are off, I don't feel guilty anymore. Yeah. And I just say, guys, find your sweater. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like it's a very nice place for me to be in. Yeah. Selfishly so, but, but I got to take care. But doesn't it give you care. some freedom? It does. Yeah. It does. One that cannot be taken away. But let's go to people pleasing because you are in the creative industry mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, your sense of humor, Pinky. Now, you <laughs> go to almost, I <laughs> go almost go answer jokes and stuff. But your sense of humor and just the things that you do online sometimes. And I look and I'm like, is this Pinky, you know? But in that space, and I've had interactions with people in the creative industry. And sometimes I look and I'm like, are you really okay? Because mm. these people pleasing thing mm -hmm. is too much yeah. for you because you've been there before us, mm -hmm. before so many of us. Mm -hmm. How did you maneuver? Did you feel like there was a point in your life where you needed to be loved by other giants in the industry? Absolutely. Where you, you needed to please your boss, your co-workers? So this is one of the reasons I left Capital FM mm. because it was just not working anymore. I felt like I was bending over back backwards and nobody could see me. There was no validation. So what was that doing to me? It was breaking me. But again, I feel that was the lesson, right? Yes. Like Take yourself away from the situation so you understand that nobody needs to validate you but yourself. The validation comes from you. Um, I've tried to please, you know, my in-laws. It's, it's like, oh my God, see me, please see me. Hello, see look at me. Already. Yeah, um, look at me. I can do this as well. Look, I can do this. I can roll around chapati and things like that. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> but people will only understand you for as, as much as they want to. So you could be the best person. But if people are hell-bent on saying, the way she rolled that chapati was there was a little on the side then they'll always misunderstand you if they are hell-bent on misunderstand they'll only understand you to their their level not to your level mm. so that's when i was like okay i'm different from other people when it comes to the creative space <clears throat> i have never been that person to kiss ass I've never, you can even ask, which is why I'm a bad person, mm -hmm. maybe to, according to some people, mm -hmm. but I won't. And I will not lose my dignity to keep uh, a paycheck or look for a paycheck. I will not. That is one thing that I believe in. Yes. <clears throat> Human dignity must be maintained. So shame on anybody who tries to take it away from you based on you know, we, if you want this, mm. you need to you do, gotta do this. this. And yes, you know, so, some people are are confused and they, they, they feel like that's a means to an end and I got to go down this route. But it goes back to who you are and learning who you are and sitting with those demons and finding out why they're there and asking them to leave politely. Mm. Are you able to lay your head down on a pillow at night and say, I did good today. Yeah. I did good. In my conscience is clear. That's that's where I come from. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and again, the prayerful part of me comes from my mother who taught me to pray, who taught me that no matter what you're doing, even if you're alone, there's a higher power yes. who is observing. And karma is real. Is real. So, yeah, I mean, 
people pleasing is very much a part of the industry. Mm. But you know, when you talk about my humor, I think my humor comes from my trauma. Yes. It's a channel. I have dark humor. But where where did that also come from? It came from something I read that never take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. You're not going to come out of this thing alive. Yes. So the first person you should be willing to laugh at is yourself. Yeah. So yeah. I'm okay with laughing at my I'm okay with making mistakes. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with failure. And it's never that serious. And it's not that serious. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about you being in this space. People know now Pinky Gelani, but yeah. people know also Pinky Gelani, the way they put it. She's a woman and she's growing old. She mm-hmm. needs to get married, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Et mm-hmm. She needs kids mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Did you ever encounter that? Of pressure? course. Oh. oh, my God. So, um, especially with the, in the Indian community. So, I got married at... 30 which is old so old oh my god <laughs> terrible <laughs> i was an old maid <laughs> by that time oh my um and then of course when i went through my miscarriages because yeah. i had four miscarriages the talk was oh it's because she waited so long her eggs are old i mean come on I'm crying out loud it's, it's just education that you need yes. around you can't say things like this and I'm glad that we are a more informed society because nowadays you cannot get away with yes. talking like that. Good. Um, we're going to check you. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to check you. <laughs> I mean, even at 51, people are having babies, yes. right? So, mm. um, but yeah, I mean, there was always old. I'm older than my husband. I've never hidden that. I'm th- three years older than him. Just three. Just three. But, you know, people make it out like she's so old. She's so much older than him. Um, Maybe because he looks young. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You look young. <laughs> huh? You look young. I look young. Very young. <laughs> I don't know what that means yes. anymore, right? Because I'm very okay with my age. Good. And I feel like also we need to redefine that whole thing of you look young. It's, it's, yes. You look your age. There's nothing you look wrong. okay. Yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with looking yes. your age. Um, because I love nowadays, that. and you know, having seen my brother die at the age of 20, um, getting older is such a gift. Good. Yeah. They'll be trolling you on Twitter. Saying yes, how okay. you're old, you need to have... Someone told me, I can see your gray hair, I can see your lines. I don't know, I did a photo shoot where I did this and you could see all my crow's feet. There's a, yeah. their laughter lines. I'm yes. like, it's okay. They're there. I'm not airbrushing nothing. I'm not hiding anything. And I, I, ask me my age, I will tell you mm-hmm. openly. How old? 47. I know. 48 in Feb. In this coming fair yeah okay yeah yeah you look your age yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> and i'm very proud to be this age mm. because then it also takes away and it demystifies for the younger generation who are always sort of um uh what's the word um a target when it comes to oh you have to be afraid of being old getting old you have to get uh, what, what what's the thing nowadays um, um, you, you have to get married yeah before you're 25 so that you can oh. have all your kids before you're 30 yeah, yeah. so that you won't be taking your kids in school so by the time you're 40 you're taking a four-year-old to school you look like you're the grandma yeah. it's too much pressure it's man. too much it's too much or you know um have the collagen have the botox yes. um anti-wrinkle cream oh, my, please guys just be happy and don't hanker after something that is no longer for you mm. just own your space yes. but this is that point where they are coming for you they like you older than your husband mm-hmm. did it affect you though no good because i'm the one who tell who tells people <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is what it is yeah. right it is I, i've never been somebody who's hidden and I'm like, oh no, don't don't mm. reveal this about me. Don't reveal. There was a point, maybe before I became 30, I was like, no, 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 I don't want to tell people my age because I, again, going back to these books, ask a woman her age, and she, if she tells you that, she can tell you anything. Yes. But why are we being so secretive about our age and other things? What are we trying to hide? <laughs> what are we hiding? Yeah, yeah. Could you walk me through how you got through your miscarriages? So again, uh, going back to why, why am I going through this? Why, why, what have I done 
what, are, what is the lesson that I need? My assumption was as a woman, I am supposed to have children. It is a birthright. But then understanding my body, understanding my hormones. Who's teaching us about these things? Well, right? Nobody's telling us that a regular period should look like this, that your hormones are doing this, that this is what's happening. There. It's only until you're really like in the thick of it that mm. I understand now progesterone and when you're ovulating. And it's like, what? Wait, <laughs> why wasn't, okay, fine, maybe in biology, but you're basically scratching the yes. surface. You're not going in depth. Um, and then understanding that it's the foods we eat or maybe the vaccinations we've had that could be messing with your hormones. Mm. So really taking a deep breath and understanding, wait, this could go far back as when I was a child and immunized and how do I detox from that? How do I better my diet? How do I, because in your 20s and your teens, you're just eating rubbish, (laughs) whatever it is, whatever time it is, you just whatever, when you're hungry, Mm -hmm. put anything into your mouth. (laughs) Like it's a hot dog or a burger. Not understanding that processed food is messing with your hormones. Mm. Nowadays, not understanding that maybe the chicken we're eating has got a lot of hormones pumped into it already. So it's being aware of, oh, and it's hard. So again, why is this happening to me? Who can I help because of this? And what need I do Mm. in order to own my journey, in order to be able to say, if I become a mom, great. If I don't, what then? What are the other options? And I remember speaking to my father-in-law. He said, no, in today's world, medicine is so far advanced. You will be a mother. He said that to me. You will be a mother no matter what. Um, And, you know, just understanding and empathizing Mm -hmm. and knowing that, Everybody's got a journey. Was that some type of affirmation for you coming from your in-law, especially your father-in-law? Because many a times, even some of the women I've spoken to, you had four miscarriages. The people would be kicking you out of your home, like, oh, no, you can't give our son's kids, yeah. get out. We need to find someone who can. Mm-hmm. But hearing that from your father-in-law must have really been great for you. I mean, for him to say, you will be a mother, mm. it affirmed, right? Because what are we all looking for? Like go going back to that whole validation yeah. thing. Yes, fine, you can validate yourself. But when someone tells you, you will be, right? It's like, oh my God, I will be. Yes. There's no doubt in his mind. Why am I doubting it? Why am I doubting yeah. myself? Uh-huh. And that's why, again, what we say to other people really matters. Right, Lynn? The words we use. The words we use to other people. Yeah. Somebody says, I want to be a TV presenter. Say, you will be. You will be. And you'll be great. Yes. Where is drama? You will be. <laughs> you will be. And you <laughs> and will, will be, be great. great. Yeah. Because... I mean, who are we to say, ah, you, what are you thinking? Who do you think you are? (laughs) Who do you think you are? It's not for you. Because you you never know also the karma in your words. I tell my children, your words are your prayers. So what you say to others and yourself, it will be. Mm. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. So be very aware. Yeah. Be mindful mm. of the words that come. Absolutely. You know, that's why I never forget our first encounter. You are so kind. You are so warm. I was like, oh my God, is that Pinky Gelani? <laughs> <laughs> like, is that Pinky Gelani? But I, when you say who taught us these things, I feel like there are so many things no one teaches us. I read somewhere you banked uh, the stem cells of your child. Yes. Now, for me, I was like, what, what, what's even that? What does it even mean? Yeah. Another thing no one teaches us that we could actually bank. Stem cells. Stem cells. Why why did you do that? So now in retrospect, I'm like, why did I do that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because maybe they've cloned my son. (laughs) That's a conspiracy theorist in me. I'm like, "Hmm, Mm -hmm. why did I do that? Mm -hmm. Um, But at that time, you know, it was the awareness of, and the person who told me to bank my son's stem cells 
lost her son because of something that happened to him. Mm. And it was a neurological thing. So again, when my mom's stroke happened, I was like, ah, this is why I banked my son's stem cells. And I went and I was like, can we please, can it, can it be injected? And, and they were like, yes. it doesn't work like that. It's okay. Yeah. But maybe it will help someone. Yeah. And if I had the power to do that, yes. However, I feel like I should have educated myself a little bit more okay. around it. Mm. But still, I've done it and I pray. You know, again, it's just covering it in white light and saying maybe it goes to the greatest good mm. as opposed to being used for any other reason. Oh, easy. You, med you meditate. I do. You do yoga. Yeah. Eh. To me, Fikiwa. So yoga, Yes. let me tell you. I had a conversation with Mercy and she's like, don't, because I did a yoga collection with Vivo, Mercy Masika, and yes. she's like, don't call it yoga. <laughs> That's devil worshiping. And I was like... Messy. And she's like, no, no, don't call it that. She's like, I can wear it if it's not called yoga. I know why Muka is laughing because we have seen Messi is an amazing human. Yeah. Because we are sitting with her in London in some room, mm -hmm. right? We had a trip and we were in the same events together. And we had like three hours conversation. She's like, okay. she's she's so upfront. You yeah. Know? She'd be like, don't call it yoga. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't call it. She's like, I can't wear it if it's called yoga collection. I'm like, <laughs> But Masi, it's just yo yes. so yoga is the mm. ancient art of exercise that comes from Hinduism, <laughs> which basically it's a, it's an old uh, it's the oldest maybe yes. form of exercise, and all it is is that is exercise. Mm. So I feel it has been misconstrued yes. in many ways. Yes. <laughs> Poor yoga. <laughs> However, oh, I respect that. If yeah. that's what you believe, I'm not going to come here and say, oh, and, and you know, that day when I, when Mercy told, I laughed, I laughed with her. Yes. And I said, okay, Mercy, if that's your belief, Don't no worries. Mm -hmm. That's on, you know, that's yeah. you, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not going to impose, right? That's not my job to say, no, but this is what yoga is. For me, yoga is very different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is an, a form of yes. exercise. It is not a form of worship in any way, right? <gasps> Yoga is in essence a way of bringing you back to your breath. Yes. What is breath? Breath is life or breath is God. And that is the same thing that meditation teaches. Yeah. It's breathing. And I said this in one of my talks yeah. in Engage, yeah. if you'll allow me yes, to please. sort of just come around it. Yeah. Um, there was a person who asked God, what is your name? And God said, my name is Yahweh. And uh, they couldn't understand. They're like, what, what do you mean Yahweh? He says, it is Yahweh. So if you break it down, Yah could be the sound of breathing in. Yeah. Yahweh. In and out. Yeah. We. Yeah. So maybe God is breath. And that is why when we say, go into the present moment, because when you are in the present, you are able to do so much. Yeah. And how do you bring yourself into the present moment is by taking a deep breath. Yes. So, you know, there's a lot of beliefs. And like I said, I'm not here to impose, yeah. but I feel this resonates with me a lot. Uh, yoga, separate. Mm, yes. Masi, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a form of exercise and it's an ancient Hindu mm. form of exercise mm -hmm. because if you really go through the exercise, it's hard. It's hard. It's very hard to yeah. do yoga. What but does it do to your mind though? Uh, it brings you into the present moment. So all, say for example, you're holding a posture that's a bit tough. The, the yoga instructor will tell you breathe through it. So all you can focus on is your breath and maybe that pain mm. that you're going through. It's like, through. ah! Yeah. Um, but where are you? You are in the present. Right. You are here now, now here, yeah. or nowhere. Here or nowhere. And now here or, or nowhere. nowhere. Okay. <laughs> do you do you exercise solitude? Um, I try to. Hmm. I try. Okay. Uh, it's hard with dogs. <laughs> Kids and young kids, where you're just like, uh, need a moment, and uh, then someone walks in. Listen, I need to do this and I need to do that. And like my son said to me this morning, he's like, I need to send my letter to Santa. I'm like, yeah, we'll post it. 
So he looked at me. Now this is where you know the generation difference. Yes. It's like, so you need me to take a photo of it and post it on Instagram. I'm like, no, we need to go to the post box, yes. <laughs> the post office yeah. and post it there. Yeah. yeah. You're going to do that. Yeah. I do it every year with them. Santa. For as long as they believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as you wait for the shock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I I mean, like my daughter is like, I know the tooth fairy doesn't exist. Yes. I'm like, yes. Yeah. Let them dis let them believe in magic for mm. as long as they can, mm. because I feel like also your beliefs will take you to spaces and Good. places. You know, a lot of power yeah. in um, imagination. Imagination. It's yeah. more important and more powerful than yeah. knowledge. You know. Mm -hmm. I love that you are such. Do you believe in a family foundation? Do I believe a in marriage that? set up? I do. Mm. I I do believe in, like I remember having a conversation. With, this was much before I was married. I yeah. was in India with my cousins, and my cousin was going through something, and they looked at me. The whole friend circle, who are much older than me, yeah. they said, "What do you believe in, in marriage?" I said, "Once you get married, the option is not to get out of marriage. Yes, if you are being traumatized." physically abused, verbally abused, mentally abused, any abuse, okay. walk away from it. Mm. However, if there are challenges in a marriage, which there are <clears throat> within the relationship, because you and him will not always be on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. then you work through it. He's going through a moment like when his father died. I had to be there. I couldn't understand him but I had to step in mm. where he felt low. I had to be with the children yes. where he felt weak. I had to be his strength. In the same regard, when I have had my moments, when my mom had her stroke, he had to step in. He had to be my backbone. Mm. When we lost our babies, we both went through a mourning period where we couldn't understand what was going on. However, I mean, I won't say it was easy, we fought. Maybe it's your fault. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe who are we blaming? Why are we blaming? You grow through those processes and you understand the people that you were when you got married are not the people you are as you go through marriage, mm. as you become parents. He fathers differently than I mother, but we need to be the same on the same page. So yeah. what happens? It comes down to communication and it comes down to understanding and mm. it comes down to saying, I'm not okay and I'm having a moment. And it also, um, you know, it's this whole thing where the, the world has changed so much, right? It, in our parents' time, or even before that, the man was the sole breadwinner. Yes. And he could, it could be that mm -hmm. because even the cost of living was such that one person's salary was enough. Mm -hmm. Today it has changed. And it is... You know, some people will say, it's wrong of you, Pinky, to say this. But I feel, and this is me in my marriage, that we cannot put the burden on one person. It's expensive. I agree. It is mad expensive. Mm. And, you know, it's not that he's only taking the burden of my, me and my family. There's his family. There's a joint family. There's other things that he's, he's running a business. Mm. So how do I become his strength? How do I work with him in this relationship? Okay. Because it matters to me. Yes. He matters to me. So how do we, how do we become mm -hmm. a unit um, despite external circumstances? I love that, you know, and there's a question I ask people on the show, mm -hmm. because when you find yourself, you're bringing 50-50, then the question of submission and leadership comes mm -hmm. in. Man, I've been in these <laughs> conversations. You yeah. should see my friend Eric of Maridad. We yeah. have this conversation every other mm. time. So, Pinky, let me ask you one of the most um, asked about question here on the show. Yeah. As a woman, mm -hmm. how do you submit to your husband yeah. and how does he lead you? So I, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah that at the end of the day, there are gender roles. And this may be like shock and horror for some people to yeah. watch and listen to. And I understand that both genders are strong. They have their strengths and their weaknesses. Mm. So what can 
what is he supposed to do within the family unit? I, I won't say allow, because that means like I'm the big boss yes. and I'm allowing him. Yes. But even as a woman, I take a step back and I say, you lead. You're the head of the family. You lead. You'll tell us. What are we doing? How are we doing? Um, I mean, there are times where I've fought with him. Uh, why aren't you doing? Why? Because it is my decision as the head of this family. And that's when I sort of say, okay, let me take a step back. As much as I have been that person who's always been sort of leading, quote unquote leading, you know, whether it's my career or um, even when I was looking yeah. after my mom, etc. Yeah. I have to show the correct respect in regards to the gender roles because I feel they they still exist. Mm. Call me call me old fashioned. It's okay. okay. However, I still am very modern in that way that I support and I will come forward, mm -hmm. you know, if there's uh, salaries that need to be paid or school fees that need to be paid, if there's something that we're struggling with, I'm not going to be like, mm hmm Figure it out. So. <laughs> because I like I, going back to that yeah. fact that we are a unit. So we, we're in this together. Mm. Let's work through it together. Mm. Um, and I understand just as there are gender roles, we are both human. And I know that maybe you are struggling. Yeah. Um, and I, I see it as a man. Maybe you're struggling with your mental health. And maybe you feel too much pressure on you. Mm. So how can I ease the burden? Mm. How am I, as your partner, as your wife, making your life yes. better, Good. easier? Easy. In order for you to be present in my life, in my world, and my children who yeah. need you. Yeah. Good. So you have no problem submitting. Yeah. Let me ask you this before I even let you go. <laughs> People say you lose yourself in marriage sometimes. You get into marriage and you forget your dreams. You have curated conversations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. around very hard topics. Mm -hmm. You're still out here. I've had the honor of coming to one of your events, you know, what women want, yes. you know. And I see every time, Pinky, you're always, what should I be talking about next? Mm -hmm. What should I create next? What conversations should we be having next? You see yeah. the same Pinky. Yeah. You know, you can still see that woman who was in red you. Sure. Your voice still here. Yeah. It still matters. But for women who lose themselves, mm -hmm. you entered into ma that marriage and you are so passionate about ABC. Now you don't remember yourself. Mm -hmm. I had an amazing guest here, Melissa. And we were talking and it took her 10 years to remember the things she used to love before she went into marriage. She loved writing, she loved poetry and she lost herself there. So for any woman who is watching you and then that part of I'm lost in this marriage or even men, what do you want to tell them or what can you share with them? I feel it's okay to get lost as long as you are purposeful on finding yourself again mm. and remembering the fact that there is an evolution that's happened. Yes. You have evolved. You are not that person. Like I said, you're not that person uh, that you were when you got married because so much has changed even within your marriage. Mm. You've found different layers of yourself. So it is only the right thing to for you to do justice for yourself is to find who you are and show up as that person authentically mm. authentically whether you're a man or a woman yeah and to also understand that if something is no longer serving you it is okay to walk away from it mm. and to release it with no hard feelings if it's no longer serving you and if that means that's what it's going to take to find yourself, to be yourself, mm -hmm. I won't say again, but to find this new version of who you need to be, then that's okay as well. Yeah. Always be kind to yourself. Just remember your journey was there for a reason. Yeah. It's so important for you to go through this journey 
to sit with your demons, yes. to learn who you are, because then it shows you how you want to show up. Yes. And who you want to show up as. Yes. And who, you know, because no matter who you are, Lynn, mm. you're inspiring somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody's watching you. So your legacy will continue through yes. that person. So yeah. how do you want to leave your legacy? Mm. How do you want to leave your legacy? Yeah. That's beautiful. Back to meaningful conversations. Yes. You define yourself as a conversation curator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was just saying earlier, I've witnessed you use your voice in different conversations. Sure. I think one day we went and did something with you and HCR. Yes. You've been there. You're yeah. still there. you still, you know, helping and using your voice in places that matter. How is that going for you? Oh, that's amazing. I'm always honored to be able to use my voice. I have been told off because I've not used my voice for what's going on in the war yeah. at the moment. Yeah. However, I feel it's not my place. Not yet. Not yet. I, I just, right now I am uh, an observer, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I also feel within our borders, there's a lot, uh, there's so much that's going on. Oh, tell me about it. That we need to use her mm. voice for. Mm. And... Um, it's okay if yes. you hold it against me when I don't use my voice. That's okay because I know my purpose. I know the reason that I may not be vocal mm -hmm. at the moment. But like I said, within our spaces, within this country in itself, there's so much that we need to say. Mm -hmm. There's so much we need to use our voice yes. for. Um, so yeah, just going back to that, it's 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 an honor to be called mm -hmm. to to be a voice for yes. something. You know that. I know. Yeah. And now I get to ask you, what do women really want? <laughs> <laughs> we want a dress with pockets. <laughs> That's it. Uh -huh. um, oh. You know, I think the great thing about having the brand What Women Want uh, is that it can continue for such a long time because we really will always be able to unpeel what women yes. want. Yes. There's so much and there's nothing wrong with women wanting everything. Mm. But I feel it's clarity, it's grace, it's respect. The, the fundamentals, the foundation of every conversation, what we take away, yeah. whether we're talking about divorce or FGM or, um, you know, miscarriages or making money. It's that, that, mm. you know, self-respect. Yes. self-validation and just knowing who you are mm. so that you're able to yeah. just Exist be that person and be happy yeah. in this life huh? you've done a good job yeah. for me it's how you keep every time you're on the chase for the next conversation what should we be talking about and even when you when you when you don't speak your voice still matters as you said you are quiet for a reason yeah. and i don't think anyone should ever force you into speaking when yeah. you are not ready yeah. to speak i feel like um and again you know somebody was screaming at me online and said i'm going to unfollow you because of that yeah. and i said by all means go ahead but you see if you want peace in the world you must be peace energy yes. it goes back to that if you are striving for peace mm. then who are you yes and what energy are you giving out because mm. that's that's what's going out there right mm -hmm. so we can be and i always say this lynn whenever we're in elections or whatever we can be here bitching and moaning and saying yes. ah those people and ah it's that energy that's going to go out and manifest into something mm. or we can just be like whatever the outcome is it's okay it's okay we can make it work we'll make it happen yeah i know sometimes it's hard i know times are even hard right now i mean my husband complains and i'm like hey please no room for complaining mm. here i'm like you can either cry mm. or you can be the person who's selling the tissues you decide oh yeah you <laughs> You cry or sell the tissues. Yeah, you, you decide. decide. Ah, that's a powerful. Yeah. Oh, I never thought of it that <laughs> it's way. It's simple. It's simple yeah. because we can be, We. it's up to us who we show up as, right? Yes. And that's why our journey is important. That's why sitting with yourself is important because mm. that will make you decide that this is who I want to be. Do you want to be a victim or oh. do you want to be the person who's controlling? 
no, what happens. I don't want to be a victim. Yeah, there you go. I don't want to be a victim. Uh, I want to let you go. But Yay. before I do, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. But is there anything I've left out that you feel like you want to touch on? Oh, no. I just think this was a beautiful oh, conversation. Please. And I, I'm so honored to sit on your couch oh. and have this conversation with you. Thank I've you. seen some very powerful um, people sit mm. here and... Yeah. and powerful in all ways you yes. know there's there's people you've you've made a difference yeah. for so many people you've given so many people a voice thank and you. i want to say i think yeah. what i should say on behalf of everyone is thank you lynn oh. because wow mm. look at you take your flowers thank take your flowers you. thank you yeah I appreciate coming from you. No, really. Not that even if it comes from other people, I take it for granted. Yeah. I don't. But you you are a legend in oh. this space. Wow, thank I you. I mean, some of us are because you were. Thank and you. And you still are. Thank you. For us not to acknowledge that would be a mistake. It would be selfish. <gasps> no, true, true. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you the now truth. Now I see why the box of tissues is No, you either cry or be the one today. I'm going to oh, sell you these sell tissues. tissues. No, like, no, no, no. yeah. Me, I'm no, you, <laughs> you don't, don't take it for, like, mm -hmm. I remember my days when we used to live in Huruma in mm -hmm. a one room, me and my sisters and my family. Some people wonder why I love music so much. I love music. I loved listening. I used to be, who are these people now in this radio? Mm -hmm. Look at how she's talking. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I wish I could. Oh God, the things I've wished for in this life. I think I've even wished to be a president at some point, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe it will come. But I just wanted you to take your flowers and know some of us are because you went there and created those spaces for Thank us you, to look up to some look at you, look at Eve D'Souza, Caroline Motuko, um, Sophie Kenya, the late Catherine Kasabuli. I mean, Jesus, yeah. you know what you did to us even before we knew people like Aman Po? We yeah. knew you, like, even before we knew we could be. You know how many times I came to Capital FM to drop my CD? Really? Oh my God, a demo. I should look for that demo and play it. I made oh a three gosh. minute demo. Yes, I made a three minute demo and I would just, I wanted to be a presenter so bad you should have had the accent. God, <laughs> maybe that's, hey, no, 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 my name is Lingo, this cap I'm like, oh, come on now, shame on you, Lynn, you know, but, but we start I was from trying, somewhere. I was trying. And yeah, that's it. I, I was trying, you, you know, but I. You didn't just sit back and yes. be like, ah, it'll come to me. Yeah, but then I think when you show up as your most authentic self. Sometimes people think I love the Afro mm -hmm. so much. They don't know. I, I got into this industry with an Afro because the wigs and the, the whatever, it was too expensive it's for expensive, me. Yeah. You know, I got into this industry when I could not fake an accent mm -hmm. anymore. I was just like, I'm going to show up as the most authentic self. And now That's I look it. back and I'm like, God, thank you so yeah. much for that insight. It's worked. And I want you to take your flowers for all the we women. You are not old. When I say we used to look up to you, it's just oh because girl, some of us went to that. school so late. Like, you know, thank <laughs> Call you. Call me old. I don't mind. Yeah, thank you for all the hearts you've touched. I see your work. It's just that you've not even spoken about your humanitarian uh, things that you do. I see you and I acknowledge you and I want you to know that you've really done good. So may God bless you. And you as well. Right? Yes, Thank all of you us. Very much. All, all of, of us. us. Yes. Everyone watching as well. Well, yeah. yeah. Something we do on this show, looking at this camera before we wind up, dear Pinky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what would you like me to do? T what would you like to tell yourself? Myself? Yes. Dear Pinky. Oh, dear Pinky. Yes. <gasps> oh, <laughs> this is tough. No, it's not. <laughs> wow. I've never, I've never spoken to myself yeah. like that. Yes. On camera. Yes. Without sounding arrogant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Pinky, oh my God, you're amazing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Dear Pinky, I would just want to say thank you for doing the work within yourself. It's not been easy. And thank you for showing up, not only for yourself, but for others. 
I think that's it. Okay. That's it, you know, because you've... tough. No, it's that's not. a hard one. <laughs> you've, 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 you've inspired us through the conversation. So sometimes I, I tend to think you need to inspire yourself yeah. as well. You need to acknowledge the things that you've done. So thank you for being there for yourself and for other people. It matters, all right? It does. Where can my people find you? I am available on all social media, yes. as you've heard. Yes. <laughs> Including TikTok. TikTok. At Pinky Gelani. Mm -hmm. It's Good. all at Pinky Gelani. At Pinky Gelani. Yeah. Shall we wrap up? Yes. All right. I hope you guys have been inspired as I am. Dreams come true. I'm slowly convincing myself with this show. Sometimes I host people here and I'm like, oh my God, this is me hosting <laughs> Pinky. You know, not to simp guys, but sometimes when you've looked up to people for so long and you get to have a conversation with them that is so natural, you can't just help but be happy about keeping on, you know, the faith, the hope and knowing, man, I gotta chase this dream no matter what it takes. So I keep telling you guys, I know it's our theme for Inspire Global, but no matter what your hustle is, just be proud of it. There is no shame in hard work, yeah? And go get that book, Khalil Gibran, The Prophet, guys. I'm telling you, it's a life changer. It's a life changer for everyone. That and Alchemist, for me, they were like... <gasps> me too. You too? Paulo for, Coelho. Yes. That for changed me? my life. Me too. That's one of the books me that too. just... Me too. Shifted my perspective. You'll have it right here, but yeah. you'll go around the world looking for and it and you just there. left it yeah. right here, you know. So get those books and I hope I remember. Yes, it's Najwa Zaiban on um, Women of Impact uh, by Lisa Bilyeu. That's where she had that conversation. I'm going to put it here on the side. Yes, she had that conversation about inviting your demons in. Have a cup of tea with them or a cup of coffee with them. Ask them, why are you here? What do you want? And after they've answered, ask them to just leave. Let's normalize having hard conversations. Let's normalize not having a victim mentality. From someone who has had it before, I can tell you it does not serve you any good. Let's get out of the people pleasing mentality. P you know what Abel said on this show? He said, People love you because of what you are giving to them. You know, if you are people pleaser, that honestly is what I would tell you. People love you because of what you're giving them. Get out of that and show up first for yourself. It's not being selfish, it's being self aware. You know what I'm saying? And also to thank our people at Kings Developers Limited. I keep saying, Content creation is not easy. You need the finances. So when I get such incredible partners on the show who have worked, we are almost a year now with Kings Developers Limited and I love the feedback that you guys are giving them. I won't sell you houses today. I won't tell you go get the apartments. Just take your time and go check them out. And I say if you have a complaint, my email is right here. Info at lnn.digital or lin.ngugi at lnn.digital. I appreciate you. I know this conversation sometimes are long, but how you guys watch conversations that two hours and 40 minutes i don't know like honestly i don't know i just appreciate you i will be there for archives forever and ever that's why i don't edit out these shows because i want you guys to benefit you can pause and come back tomorrow and continue but i want to give you everything full circle to my team muga edgar scholar of course mary kelvin and sam that take their time to compile this episode and make sure they reach you guys on time i appreciate it if you're watching watching this and you've not subscribed to this channel guy you're doing a great disservice to our work please subscribe it will help us with the algorithm and our work will continue reaching more people being your host lynn Gogi here with pinky Gawani. we're gonna say bye-bye bye bye, bye.